Well, you may have noticed at the end of our theme song, Trey and the band put together a little tribute to Meatloaf, who passed away this week, and all of us are heartbroken. He was on our show just near the end of September. We think it may have been his last public performance of his own music. Uh, best we can tell, he played in an impromptu moment, just a song, uh, down at the Lower Broadway area in December. But the last televised uh, special that he had was here on this stage, on this show. We loved him. He was so much fun. Such an amazing and unique talent. And all of us can tell you that he was one of the nicest people. And when it was over, he went around and said thank you and hello to every single person on our team. It just was a great night. You can see all of it online, um, and I hope you will, because the energy there was just fantastic. We have a little tribute to Meatloaf with some reminders of his time here with us. Well, Meatloaf died this week at the age of 74. Uh, you might find this interesting, but several years ago, I first met him when he was a guest on my show at Fox News. And we had kept up uh, all these years and would text from time to time. Now, there's not two people who are as different as Meatloaf and Mike Huckabee, okay? I'll be the first to admit that. But for reasons that I don't even know how to explain, we just hit it off. And... Uh, when he was here on our stage, he had not been on stage in six years because he'd been battling some very serious health problems, made it difficult for him to be able to perform. And he was really a little nervous about, could he do it? And folks, if you were here that night or if you've seen the video, he nailed it. What a great, great performance. Well, speaking of not so great a performance, Joe Biden held his first press conference in 10 months, and it went for almost two long hours. Now, his staff spent the next 24 hours trying to explain away a lot of what he said. I mean, even some of his staunchest disciples in the press had a hard time finding the pony among the many piles, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Look, I try to be generous in talking about political talk. I really do. I'm well aware that some things are said in an impromptu way in the heat of a moment that may not reflect thoughtful or balanced views. I also know that sometimes we simply say things that are wrong, or we say things that we think may be true, even if later it turns out not to be. I want to assure you that in my 30 years in this arena, I have done, I've done plenty of both. So I'm careful not to use the word lies when it's possible that someone simply misspoke or they had a lapse of memory or command of the facts. But there are times when there is no other explanation for something said than this simple reality that an outright lie has been spoken. I'll give an example, when a politician is reading from a teleprompter, what that means is that there is a carefully written, edited, and vetted script that has been reviewed by a number of people. One can't say, oh, I just used the wrong words. Now, here are some things being said that are just plain lies. Number one, gutting the filibuster in the Senate is not a way to save democracy. But that's exactly what Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer, and most of the Senate Democrats are saying. In fact, the filibuster was put in place to protect the minority from the tyranny of the majority. Big decisions should require big majorities, and the filibuster protects hot-headed politicians who barely have a majority from imposing terrible policies on the other half of the country without at least having a thorough debate. In 2020, Democrats loved them some filibuster. Oh, they did. 
Historically, the Democrats pretty much believe the filibuster was delivered on two tablets of stone postmarked Mount Sinai. In fact, in 2020, they used it 327 times in that year alone. The Republicans, by the way, only used it once. In fact, here is what some Democrats, including Joe Biden, said about the filibuster not all that long ago. We should make no mistake. This nuclear option is ultimately an example of the arrogance of power. Without the 60 vote threshold for legislation, the Senate becomes a majoritarian institution like the House, much more subject to the winds of short term electoral change. There is a practical concern that I have, which is were it not in place, they probably would have run roughshod over Planned Parenthood. Did you catch that? Now, every one of them were talking about their defense of the filibuster and how important it was because it will save democracy. Suddenly, I guess they're not interested in saving democracy. That's the only thing I can figure. Or they were lying, either then or now, but it can't be all of those things. Here's another big fat lie. The Democrats' so-called voting rights bill, they say it's about protecting the right to vote. That is a lie. This bill gives the federal government the power to run the elections in every state instead of having the people in your state oversee their own elections. By the way, this bill would prohibit voter ID to vote, even though 80% of Americans, including Democrats, believe that we ought to have it. And just like the devil who went down to Georgia in Charlie Daniels' classic song, Joe Biden went down to Georgia and he said those who are opposed to his power grab to make cheating in elections legal and who won't insist on voting only by legal citizens are purging the voting rolls of dead people and not allowing mass voting by mail without knowing who's casting the votes. He said that that would be siding with Jim Crow laws and it would be like taking the side of racist of the 60s like George Wallace and Bull Connor. Gosh, he forgot to mention that the KKK was started by Democrats. Or that Governors George Wallace, Lester Maddox, and Ross Barnett were all Democrats. And the chair of Bull Connor was the Democrat National Committeeman from Alabama when he was firehosing people of color. And the Voting Rights Act 1965 would never have passed without Republicans. Now the press predictably plays along with this scam, calling this license to cheat legislation is about voting rights. It isn't. It's about the right to cheat. And it's a lie when Joe Biden says that his agenda to spend another $5 trillion on a hodgepodge of government giveaways is being held up by those nasty Republicans. His own party has stopped that legislation. Thank God they have. I mean, he's got Democrat majorities in the House and the Senate, and they got the White House. It's simply a lie to say that Republicans are blocking his massive move to bring socialism to America. Can I just tell you, don't trust what the media tells you. Look at the facts for yourself. The same internet giants that try to control the news and stifle the views of conservative Christians and pro-life people can't rewrite the actual records of what's been said or done. So sure, I'm telling you, cut some slack when people make some honest mistakes when they speak. But don't ever let people who are supposed to be your servants get away with lying to you. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, then subscribe and hit the notification bell below. Now, if you didn't like it, you ought to find a Ben Shapiro video to detox you with more facts. <laughs>